Um, I want to talk about an issue that I think is very prominent in this country in particular, perhaps more so than some of our continental neighbours, and that is uh, alcohol-related social problems. So a bit of context here. Recently, I was travelling between Carlisle and Dumfries uh, to visit my family in Dumfries and Galloway. My parents live there now. And um, some people got on the carriage. It was, I think there was only three carriages. Um, it was quite a warm spring day. This was about two weeks ago. And um, the carriage was pretty busy. Uh, so... Yeah, I'd been in Carlisle for a while and uh, cost a coffee there and I got on the train. Um, anyway, these people were mostly youngish, um, fairly drunk, male and female, and just generally being a bit boisterous and, um, you know, making the presence felt. Now, they weren't violent, they weren't aggressive, but it's a situation I've been in a few times on public transport and... Um, I know I'm not the only one who finds it very, um, for want of a better term, disconcerting, stressful, irritating. I think it's just selfish. I mean, when you get these groups of people getting on, and whether it's stag -dos or hen -dos, uh whether it's guys celebrating, you know, some booze up because their team has won, or whatever it is, whatever the context, um, yeah, I, I'm very much of the view of live and let live, but I, I really find it incredibly arrogant to, you know, take over a space like that and not care how loud your voice is. And just uh, a lot of them had takeaways. So I, I used the toilet and when I came back, this takeaway, it was like a KFC meal. It was in a box. It was actually under my seat. And... I would have remonstrated with someone. I would have like said, do you mind picking this up or something? But the problem was, I didn't know who put it there. I had a strong idea. But here's the thing. When people are drunk, it's always a bit risky challenging them. Because you get some people who are silly drunks and you get others who can turn violent and aggressive, particularly in this country. And uh, so whilst I was irritated by that, I didn't really want to get into a confrontation without knowing who done it. But, you know, I, I made it clear that I was annoyed. Um, I even faked the phone call to say, oh, yeah, the journey's okay, but some drunks are on here. And it was just fake. I didn't phone anyone. I, that I was trying to, like, draw attention to the fact that, yeah, some of us can see this. But here's the thing. I think that um, some people just have no self-control. and. It's this group dynamic. People become selfish when they're in groups and they behave in ways that they wouldn't behave in if they were on their own. Some people do, but it's, re it's really a serious problem in this country. You know, I paid my ticket as they did, presumably did. Why should I have to put up with their, um, you know, constant noise, their constant um, throwing their weight around the place? It's just, uh, it's bullshit. So I think we need to take a much harder line on this. I don't think that someone who's clearly drunk should be allowed on public transport. Like I say, they weren't violent, but, you know, what's to say that they wouldn't have been if I or an inspector or someone had challenged them? Um, we do hear about assaults on public transport often. You know, um, I think it could be a very stressful job working on our railways. I've seen documentaries about it. Um, or on buses or planes. Um, I think the problem is there's just a permissiveness in our society. And if you criticise it, people think that you're square or puritanical. I like a drink as much as next man. And I, I have no problem with people getting a bit merry. You know, um, I've been drunk before. That's, you know, uh, I would, wouldn't want a situation where there's like prohibition. I mean, look at what that caused in the United States in the 20s. It, it fueled organised crime. And even to, in today's context, if you look at Iran, with their morality police, uh, actually young people in Iran have some pretty wild parties in the underground scene in Tehran. So that's certainly not the answer. But we have a problem in this country. 
you know, the amount of unprovoked assaults because some drunken idiot um, can't control himself, the amount of situations where people have ended up in hospital, the amount it costs our NHS. I think smokers are kind of stigmatised. And yet, when was the last time you heard of a smoker assaulting someone over tobacco issues? I mean, it may have happened, but it's it's far more likely that some drunken lout is going to randomly assault someone than a smoker. And I think, you know, smoking's not healthy. It's a killer. And it does actually kill a lot more people than alcohol. I believe the figure is over 100,000 people a year die from smoking-related illnesses. It's about... I think the statistic I saw was ten to twenty thousand from alcohol related diseases like cirrhosis of the liver. Um but that doesn't measure the amount of um assaults, the amount of antisocial behaviour, the, the quality of life infractions actually. You know, when I come across a large group of people and they're clearly inebriated, I I admit I get a bit tense and anxious. Not necessarily that they're going to pick on me. But just the general, you know, especially if you're on a train or a bus, having to listen to the crap, having to listen to them loudly tell crass jokes to each other and, you know, take over the whole compartment. It's it's just very disconcerting. So I do think that we need a change of attitude in this country. Drinking has been part of our culture probably since the Romans. I, I do think it's a big part of British culture. I mean, the old English pub. It's something that is very, um, particularly in England, um, it's something that is very much part of our culture. And I feel a valued part of our culture. But we cannot deny there is also a problem with this. There are too many people, male and female, I've seen women who are just as bad, who get aggressive, they get obnoxious. I mean, that, um, that lawyer from Belfast who was acting like, uh, she wasn't acting like it, she was being a racist job on that flight the Air India flight, she is just, you know, she was a prominent example because she was a lawyer. But similar situations can be replicated all the time in British city centres. And I really think it's very depressing, you know, to the point where nightclubs had to change glass containers to plastic. They shouldn't have had to do that. So... I'm not a Puritan. I, I like a drink as much as the next man. In fact, I like getting quite merry. But I know for a fact that I don't get aggressive when I'm drunk. So people who know that they get aggressive, they shouldn't drink. And I'm tired of hearing alcohol use as an excuse, like particularly when someone's been assaulted and then some judge says, oh, we understand that you uh, were had consumed this much alcohol, as if to say, well, therefore, you're not responsible for your actions. If you know that you get violent when you drink, and you drink anyway, then in my opinion, you deserve no sympathy. Um, Take some damn responsibility. I'm sympathetic to alcoholism on some level. And yes, people in my family have suffered from it. You know, it's a widespread problem and it's an illness. I am sympathetic to that. Insofar as, you know, it's a real struggle. Um, And I certainly don't look down on alcoholics because any one of us can, you know, we all have, no one's perfect. But when people are assaulting strangers, when they are, you know, just generally making life unpleasant for others because they can't control the booze, that's a serious problem. I really do think we need a sea change in this country. Very often it's related to sports, particularly football and boxing, but you get it elsewhere as well. It's just a general job culture we have in this country. And it's embarrassing, quite frankly. I think it's always been there on some level. I mean, this isn't entirely a new phenomenon. I've got a book which is documenting crimes in the East End of London in the late 19th century. And the amount of people who died um, from just drunken assaults is shocking. So, or Glasgow, you know, the serious alcohol-related violence that Glasgow's had to deal with over the years. Glasgow's actually improved, to be fair, through a range of um, policies, but it's still still a city with a lot of problems. But, you know, it's this isn't unique to anywhere, and it isn't necessarily places that uh, suffer from high deprivation. Bristol, for example, is a pretty wealthy city, yet Bristol, like 
most major cities in this country has a serious problem with um, alcohol-related antisocial behaviour. So Bristol, Glasgow, Leeds, this is a nationwide problem. And um, yeah, there's no excuse. I think as a society, we need to basically stand up to drunken lights and say, no, we shouldn't have to put up with your crap. Either take some self-control or don't whinge um, when you get arrested. And I fully, 100% support the police, um, transport officials, etc., who um, have to deal with these people. I mean, I actually ended up um, putting away that KFC meal myself in a bin because there was no inspectors on the train. I, I hate to see food wasted, but, you know, just the selfish, just this assumption that someone else will do it. Or maybe the guy or woman who done this was so inebriated they didn't even know what they were doing. It's just, this is waste. It's just selfish. And anyway, I know I'm not the only one that feels this way. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching.